So here I am at the uh, at the shipper. There's a uh, my order numbers are messed up, so we're just waiting for um, for Casey to get back to me with the order numbers. The inspector hasn't been anyway yet, so it's not as though I can get loaded. Uh, there's a scale here. This is a great place to let you pack up a night. Absolutely ample room and stuff like that. Uh, beautiful view as well. Check that out. And um, yeah, there's a scale here. I haven't weighed this empty yet, so it's always good when you get a new truck or trailer or truck or trailer or both or whatever or one or the other, get it weighed off. They all weigh roughly the same, near a damn it uh, equal, but get it weighed and then uh, you know exactly where you stand with it, you know what I mean? It's always a good idea. So what we got? Where's me? And re remember how much you've got, um, how much fuel you've got on as well. That's always, uh, you've got to note that because obviously that can change quite a lot with uh, different amount of fuel. Am I actually on this scale? I don't think I was on that properly. Let's try that again, I think I was. Straighten up a little bit. That's a bit better. I can't have been... Let's go back. There you go, 11.80. 11.80. Oops, try, try the forward one. This is boring. Here we go. Remember, when you grab your paperwork, it's quick and easy to sign for it without even looking at it. Make sure it's got your address on where you're going. Don't want to go all the way to Texas, and it does happen, they find out you've got a bloody load that's going to, uh, I don't know, LA or something. It's a long way to turn around and go back in it. So you must check, things do happen. Wrong, what was that, 11, 10 summer or other? Uh, three, fifty, um, forty. 42, 43, about 43. Good on that. 43. 40, 50, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, uh, we can have 11, 11,000, which is, I think it's going to be all right, easy actually. 11,000, what did it? Because I don't think there's a scale at the next one. So it's been changed, my other uh, Winachi one, which I had, isn't coming off now, I've got to go to Quincy, which is en route, but the... Uh, the broker has just told, told me he's going to give me some more money for it. So we're quite happy with that, aren't we? Because it is totally on route and I had two pickups anyway, so I'm uh, complaining about that. Onwards we go. Rock Island Dam there on the right. And uh, this is the in, in between the Cascade. Cascade's that side. Or are these part of the Cascades as well, I think. Yeah, so this is old Cascades, it's all snowed up a bit further back and what have you, uh, which will stay like that for the next four months, probably. But it won't get right down here. They might get a little bit, but nothing. Nothing as low down as here should be okay at this side of, uh, of, of Washington State. Which is nice, but it will get bitterly cold without wind chill. But not too much white stuff on the ground, which is what we like. On to my next one now, which is uh, 40 mile an hour. Cancelled that other one in Winachi and give me another one, but he's going to get me some more money. Which is good of Alex. Uh, said I'll save uh, put me some more money on it. It is on my way anyway, so it's not really hardship. I had two pickups anyway and agreed on the price, so. Uh, but hey ho, we messed about. The next 100 bucks would be nice. All helps. So you've got quite a bit of a climb to get in and out of here. Uh, 
<coughs> as we get back onto the 90, get away from Washington and what have you. Have a cabbage, uh, Dead Man's Pass, follow that across, and then drop down here, another score, usual one, Montana, and that way we'll be going. All the fun. All the fun of the fair. Even, you know, it's, uh, it's only just over uh, 2,000 miles to where I'm going just below Dallas. Uh, so as long as I get a couple of hundred in today, it's now Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, coming up to two o'clock. As long as I just uh, get the ne next one on, which won't be a lot, there'll probably be six pallets maximum. Um, get that on, then I'll uh, do a couple of hundred miles. That gives me 600. Each day I'll still be finished for Saturday afternoon and stuff like that. Kick back, have Sunday off, running on uh, sun running late Sunday afternoon or something like that. Park outside the place, unload, jobs are good, and bing bam bing bam, go get me return load. Which if you can't find me anything paying any better, as to now it'll be a B load back to uh, Kent Washington again, which I don't mind at all. They tip nice and early, uh, jobs are good, and, you know, they will get you in early if you get there. Which is nice. They actually say there's no other parking, but there is really, you can't park there. It does mean heavy both ways, but it is what it is, isn't it? So I'm here at Double Diamond. This is going to be funny. He's going to lose one of these pallets. Uh, dude here has decided to start unloading right in the middle of where I need to spin down to get to that bay over there. Uh, so just come in as your local Larry and uh, Stephanie rings. So I can tell her all about my my woes and problems because that's what husbands always opt it do when they're when they, you complain about the job. Listen, listen. Hi, hon. Oh. Hey, I'm uh, I'm just I'm, I'm doing a video, so I need to tell you all about my complaints, like truck driving husbands do to the wives. You can't believe what they're doing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a call back and give me two seconds. All right, sounds Love you. good. Bye, bye. Love you, bye. Yeah, that's, that's what you do. If you've got a problem, you always call your wife up and she'll just, yes, dear, yes, dear. Oh, yes, dear. So, anyway, he's out the way now. It is pretty cool, actually, when you pull into a place and there's a lot of people like, oh, now we're going to have a little chitty chat first about uh, what's happening during the day and all this. Behind me now. No, we'll get oh, right on his step. We're gonna have a little chat, 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 chat. Are we? Where's which way is he gonna go out? Does he know? Is it gonna go that way? <sighs> yeah, I've got all the time in the world. Well, produce places, they're always good. Right, so now we've got, got over with. We've had a little kiss and a cuddle. We need to. Can you see them? There? Yeah. There? Yeah. Yeah, so there's about six trucks all the way. Oh, God, select the R. Big R, big R. It means reverse. There you go, there you go. Look out. That's always good. Looking out the window. Yeah. Oh, we've got this. Yeah, a load of, load of uh, trucks all packed up here. And I thought, oh, God, I'm going to be here forever. And went over, checked in, and said, uh... they said, no, straight onto the bay. I'm like, oh, you do the walk of like proudness that it's like, <laughs> check me out people. I'm getting in before you. <coughs> I'm still dying of man flu though. Beep, beep, big truck coming back. There's Matey on his forklift bouncing about trying to lose them pallets still. This is Double Diamond in Quincy. I don't know whether they want me to trail the wheels to the back or not. I think they do. Shit. Yeah, but if they want, it's not a hardship. Just jump out and pull your trailer wheels to the back. If they do want them to the back, put them to the back. There's nothing worse than getting all settled in, making a cup of tea, and some dude comes up and knocks on your door and says, Oh, we need your wheels to the back. But well, they don't say it in a Yorkshire accent because that'd be very rare here. 
Uh, this is a nice little uh, cut the corner off, basically. Uh, I'll cut across to Kennewick this way rather than going back on the 90 west to join the 82 to go down to Yakima. I can cut across here. It is single track road all the way, but as you can see, it's pretty, pretty nice. It's lovely. There's the Colorado River there. Big Lumber River. We don't want to go in there. Bloody cold. Don't want to go in there anyway. So, yeah, we'll uh, bob along this for about, and what is it, 70 miles, and then we'll come back onto the 82 at the other side and join up. There's the uh, Cascades running along their mountains. Pretty. We're already. We're. Uh, I did weigh off. I won't go no, but I thought I better better do it just in case because I don't trust a lot of the shippers. Uh, they tend to tell fibs. Well, uh, about the weight because it's only a guesstimate when they weigh off each a pallet now and then kind of thing. And you've got. They don't weigh the pallets either, so you've got to take that into consideration about a lot of places, shippers and receipt and places where you load. If they don't weigh the pallets, you've got a pallet that sat outside in the rain and shit like that it's going to uh, weigh twice as much you had 20 plus pallets 30 pallets or something like that on there you've got all of a sudden got quite a bit of weight happening on top of your produce or whatever you're putting on and stuff like that god i'm still dying here man up man flu i think this trip's going to be called whinging burn oh, can't breathe Whoa. never mind not too far. We'll get into. Uh, I want to try and get over to to the. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Arrow Arrowhead Casino. Where I was the other night. Get there. That'll do. Get fuel. Get fueled up there. That'll get me right over into New Mexico to be cheap fuel. Nearly to Texas. That'll do. Good morning from the top of Cabbage Hill. Still feel like shit, but hey ho. Um, I was going to set off really early this morning. That's just why I always say, good thing about the CB, get a CB feed. <coughs> Turn it on to hear the news of the report. That's Dead Man's Path, that's uh, Cabbage Mountain just down there. Going west, I'm going east. Uh, it's so we had to start again. We ran out of uh, battery outside, but at least it's uh, lovely and coasty in here. A lot warmer. So I was gonna. What I was gonna say is, I was gonna show you how slippy the uh, road was out there. The car park. It's really, really slippy. I'm not gonna go that way because it's super slippy to get out. I'm gonna go around the back of the trucks and uh, see if we can get down there. Cabbage Mountain shut down, which is just over there, which is westbound. I'm going the other way. Uh, there's been a multiple truck pile up or something. And looking at the road, I can see the road over there. The uh, highway and nobody's coming past or anything on it so it looks as though it's shut down both ways now why they're clearing up the wreck and what have you uh yeah that's the good thing about the cb i always say about the cb get a cb feed turn it on this morning at 5 30 as soon as i got home as soon as i get up i turn it on see what's happening listen what's happening out there somebody said they were shut down straight away i'm on the cb which way which way is it shut down they tell me which way uh so oh, my side's all right that's okay, but I went for a walk about and it's really slippy out there. It's just, it's down at minus five, has been all night, so that's a bad temperature. You get cold and that up your eights, tens and things like that, it starts to get a bit uh, stickier. You know what I mean? Takes all the moisture out of the air and stuff like that, it's a bit safer. But the only problem is now, they shut it down both ways, I've got no traffic running on my side of the road to warm it up a bit, uh, to get rid of that black ice and shit, so. We're just going to have to go steady a bit. It's ten it's quarter past seven. I can't wait any longer. Oh. Get out of these bits that I've been driven on. Next thing we want to do is uh, jackknife it coming out of the car park, don't we? So slowly but surely, as you can see, that's the motorway up there. Well, you move when I turn. <coughs> Nobody's moving. That's a hell of a drop down there. You wouldn't want to go down there. I haven't seen the gritter. I've been up since, uh, like I say, half five, and I haven't seen the gritter or anything. It's, uh, minus, uh, it's t 22 Fahrenheit, minus five, minus six. And the truck was toasty and warm. So up to now, I can't believe it. 
you know, but there's no wind, so it's not blowing in or anything like that. That's something. Let's get up here. And on we go. Yeah, this is Dead Man's Pass. Uh, some say it's not Dead Man's Pass, whatever. It's the old Dead Man's Pass we're spinning. Get up that hill. Come on, bitch. Come on, fuck. Come on, Bess, gear up there. Let's get on this road. Let's get the job done. <coughs> little by surely, but little, little, uh, what's the, I don't know, the tortoise, the grins, the race slowly, but short some of race. <laughs> I've been on the road uh, 10 minutes now and I haven't seen one vehicle. Not coming my way, not going the other way, no nothing. So it tells me obviously they've got the full mountain shut down. They're in, this is through a mountain pass. <coughs> um, uh, so you ain't got a lot of people living around here or anything like that, so you aren't gonna get a lot of traffic coming in or out. But they've obviously shut it down way, way further back to stop a backlog of traffic coming up here. Temperature's dropping even more now, we're down at minus, uh, minus 20 Fahrenheit. Seems really eerie with nobody about well, You know, you go on a lot of roads where there isn't any people and I don't see them for, for half an hour, 40 minutes or something like that. But on this road, which is uh, quite a busy one as a rule, nobody about at this time of day. There's somebody. I don't know of a way around here, apart from going miles, miles out of your way. You can't go over the, uh, the back road, you'd never get over that if this is bad. mentioned time and time again uh, they must have just opened up now a few, uh, a few couple of cars coming through or whether they're coming out there there is a town actually just down here so they might come in out of there um, there is very important you get over the top of that mountain you get to the right side of it the side you want to be at uh, on the night if, it, if it's open and stuff like that this time of year it's, it's really is paramount otherwise I'd be sat down at it, which it would be tempting to stay back at Arrows and uh, stay in the casino because the, the weather forecast was uh, no snow or anything like that, which there isn't any snow. But nobody can predict a, a great big freeze coming down like that and just freezing the whole place over. Um, so, like I say, if I hadn't, I hadn't, I'd be stuck at the other side for God knows how long now <coughs> until they can manage to get the wreck off and stuff like that. There's about three or four Arctic's, uh, um semis all piled up and someone must have gone across the road. I don't know which part it's at because Google's map's not showing me actually. It's nothing on there. Uh, I spoke to a guy going the other way. He's been shut down all night. He was they just pulled, pulled him up alongside and shut, stopped him. So uh, you've got no internet reception, no cell reception, no nothing out here. So he was just going over the top of the hill to tell all his folks that he's alright. It's got to be you know, worrying if uh, 
the la last year uh, relatives and uh, your wife, your partner, whatever, uh, hair is you going over up cabbage and then they get on the news in the morning there's been multiple pile up and shit and you've got no internet reception or anything like that so he's going, he's going up to the top of the hill and he can only get the service area there you can get reception so that was as far as he's going to get as he said he's been shut down here all night which uh as it's freezing up the lake the river you can see there is what it is it's winter oh yeah get it over the other side of the mountain very, very important to the right side. It's a beautiful morning. Oh no, now the uh, fog's clearing up. Yeah, your uh, everybody knows your bridges freeze up before your um, before your road. They get cold because of obviously the cold coming under and stuff like that and humidity and they moisture and then that'll freeze on top of the uh, on the bridge <laughs> we haven't seen where he's backed up to yet the queue there must it's gonna be a horrendous queue now the, the reason I could think is why the bear shut it down close it down a lot further back is because if you if they shut it down just before the uh, the mountain, before the drop down the mountain rather, you'll get cars trying to go off and vehicles trying to go off down these slip roads and stuff like that. Then you're going to get all sorts of shit shot. Because if it's bad on this main road, what's it going to be like on them little roads? Because there's only a couple that you can get down on the uh, back roads, <laughs> which you can get through. But gee, you'd end up with trucks and cars all over the place. It would be a nightmare for the authorities and people trying to clear up. So. You know, that's the safest way, obviously, shut it down well, well before, and then people can't try and uh, go for it in different directions, which they would, they will. very much the scale will be open. There's a, a mixture of freight there. Cargo, it's got cars, it's got old empty timber. Why not they they're not cold no. Got a mix bag there. You think you've got, got it bad when you've got two or three pickups? Imagine this dude connecting all them. Well, you want so and so of that, you want that one, you want that one, you want that one. Jesus Christ, it must take forever. Hook them all up. It's all got to be hooked up by hand. Everyone. That poor dude in the middle doesn't hear whether he's coming or going, does he? He's stuck in the middle of it all. I wish they'd wash them. I really wish they'd wash the trains. Double stacks. I'm presuming these are going to be empty. They've got to be empty. That's too long to be to be fully freighted. Obscene amount of weight as it is empty. Oh, and no train at the front. We're waiting for a waiting for a little bit of a tour. Same as matey with his uh, wide load, oversized load there. Good morning from Price, Utah. Moab that way. Uh, Salt Lake City that way. So uh, this is one of the, just show you one of the little places I usually little hidey hole. Better not tell anybody. I've told everybody now, haven't I? Shit. This is uh, just a bit of waste ground. Up on uh, that's that's the um, the road there. That's not a freeway. It's a US road. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. Uh, that takes me down to Moab, uh, down to Green River rather uh, first, and then then on to, towards Moab through Price and, and what have you. That's Price over there. 
right? Uh, nice little spot, really quiet, never get anybody here. It does get a bit slippy when the snow cart's coming down and I can't sometimes get up here because there's been too much snow, but as a rule, it's not too bad. It's nice and quiet. This hotel there, there's a sports bar over the other side of there, and another bar there, and uh, Dairy Queen, and uh, hotels and stuff like that. It was a bit frosty last night. Let me tell you, I'm well impressed. Um, I don't know how Peterbilt have pulled this off or what they've done inside of there, but it was down at minus eight last night. I hardly had the bunk heater on. I had it set at something like 73, I think, something like that. Lovely and toasty and warm. No cold feet, sees no touch, sees cold, no nothing like that. Absolutely spot on, Peterbilt. Let's find out what it's like when it gets dropped down to minus 16, minus 20s and things like that. But at the moment, I'm well happy with it. I really am. I can't believe it, seriously. And, uh, you know, chuffed, chuffed as anything, because I thought it was going to be really cool. Like, I give it a bad rap, I think, at first. Let's just have, There's a couple of other things I did as well. Um, we'll jump through right now while we're here. There's uh, things like this. These switches on here. When I first saw those, I thought, well, they've got this lovely, um, I've still got coal, got this lovely control panel up here with all these switches and your big toggly switches and man switches for big man carrot hands so they're not knocking them. And these ones are for your carrot finger boys so they don't touch the ones as you're driving along. You don't want to be touching none of them as you're driving. Ooh, stay away from them. These ones you can and touch all those. Uh, I thought, well, why not put all the controls, everything in the same place? Ha ha! But now I realise, all these jobbies, really sensible thinking, are all where you can reach them when you're outside the car. And you stood on the floor. Excellent idea. Keys on the left side, reach them from outside the cab, everything. Well thought out, Peterbilt, well thought out. So, you know, it's all coming together little bits, whereas first, I was like, <coughs> Jesus. Oh, that's me. What have I done? Oh, there we go. Uh, I was, oh, what's it doing there? What have they done that for? That's a bit silly place. It'd be nice up there, but now it's all coming together, really is. Spot on. One tick to Peterbilt there, or two, with a warm cab as well. I just nipped it. Ha, ha, ha. Hello. <clears throat> I just nipped into the outlaw calf for breakfast. First time I've been in there. I've been meaning to call in there since uh, I've been passing to have a look at it and it turns out that the cab was uh, established 1960s early 1960s around about that time and uh, I was looking at some of them that's worth going in there it's through one of the little towns you'll find it google it how long cab it's a little motel hotel if you wanted to get out of price or away from the mainstream and stuff like that it's a nice place to, to chill out and stuff like that it's um, got a bit of memorabilia and they, quite a lot of the outlaws hung out down there Back in the, I didn't realise it was 1965 before they actually got, um, not Billy the Kid, where was it? Uh, oh god, I forget his name now. I just read it as well. Um, one of the other outlaws, uh, Butch Cassidy. They only got him in, uh, in 19, 1965. They arrested him. I was born in 1966. Jesus, you know, it's not that long ago. Uh, and the lady was telling me uh, behind the bar, she was saying that um, it's uh, where they used to hang out because it's nice and quiet there. And the uh, Butch Cassidy and his gang would uh, pr uh, basically hang out around this area, all around this area. Because you'd only be a day and a half, two days, maybe, no, two days probably over into Salt Lake City, do a bank robbery, boop, back over the mountain again. It's a safe haven kind of thing. So. And uh, I was looking at the sheriff, local sheriff there of Price and stuff like that. I would want to be a sheriff back then. No way on this earth. Not my idea of one being. This is a bit bouncy, isn't it? Being a sheriff, I wouldn't want none of that. What are you going on? Um, I think I'm going to stop. <coughs> I've got a bit of time now, so I'll see what time it is when I get to the, this um, a Billy the Kid Museum. Or is it so, uh, just as I, I get into New Mexico, as I'm coming out, no, I come off the main I-40, away from, um, what's it called, Santa Maria. I think it's just outside of Santa Maria. Down there, if I get there in good time, I'll uh, I'll go check that out, I think. Let's see what we can do. do. That'll probably be tomorrow morning. That'll work. I think it actually looks prettier coming in from this way. Coming into it, dropping down into Automoab. Man, this is so else. 
Every time I come down, I think this this don't just don't look real. Not real. But it is. It's right there. Lucky trucker. I've got to uh, start stopping Moab. Run out coffee, quaffy. So uh, we need some coffee. So can't live without the coffee. So I'll, I'll nip into the uh, supermarket now where I park up back up uh, for regular followers. So my YouTube channel will know where we park at the back of that, right in the Spackman Bay, middle of Moab. And the snow line is slowly creeping down in it. You don't very. I, I haven't really seen any snow uh, in Mohab. It gets extremely bitterly cold though. Uh, but coming down as far as that didn't usually happen. Well, it hasn't happened the time I've been coming out here. Not unless I've missed it. Whereas you get 50 mile further on and uh, turn left towards Colorado, and then you'll start hitting the snow. Pretty and pretty. This is a, a spectacular run, is this? As well, because rather than going all the way across the I-14 to take 40 when I get into New Mexico, I'll be um, travelling so far along to Santa Maria and then dropping down, uh, coming across a little uh, state line in between uh, New Mexico and Texas, a bit further down, nice little Tex-Mex down there. Very run-down old, old state line is that one. But it's a, it's a picturesque, nice run. Go through a lot of uh, little old villages and stuff. And I've managed to sniff out some cheap fuel that I'm hoping. Uh, I rang the fuel desk, the one in Almarillo. Uh, not Almarillo, no, it wasn't Almarillo. It was Albuquerque, where the duck's from. Um, I, ra I rang them up, called them up, and I said, do you take my fuel man card? Well, Really sure she won the brightest on the film, the check of bless her. But uh, she did take fuel card, so I'm hoping it's uh, 4, 4, 4, 462 there a gallon. So I'm hoping they do take the fuel card, so I'm gonna fire it in there and fuel right up, and that'll get me there and back because I won't be going to that other one that I, uh, I used uh, the other week because that's further along the 40. I'm not going that way, I'm dropping down before that. That's where we went on holiday, up yonder, up there, over the top of the Arches Pass. No, it's absolutely spectacular. Not as big as queue as in summer now. And then you've got a sand dune here thing. It's slide down, or roll down, or run down, or whatever. Whatever you take your fancy. Terrible job. <laughs> and the next pretty bit. As I've mentioned before, uh, if you're gonna, if you're down here in Moab with your family. <coughs> These hotels here seem to have a lot better swimming pools and stuff like that. There is one right in town across from the supermarket as they are. Uh, majority of them have heated pools all year round and they are red hot even in the middle of winter. So, you know, no worries about there at any time of year you're coming out and stuff like that. Uh, you, you see, you, oh, look who's sleeping there, the dear family. Um, so it's going to be nice and warm and stuff like this. These ones are a little bit out of the town, but... Uh, they have more amenities and stuff like that if you've got your family or stuff like that. There's one on the other side of town on the, um, which I was south side, and that's got a fancy old uh, swimming pool and all such shit going on and stuff there. There's the river, you can fly. Uh, do rafts down the river. Where's the river? It's not the river. Oh, it's not the river. The river's just a bit. The Ranger of a has woken up. Uh, hello, big truck. Yeah, there's your boat so you can go down the river. Look at the size of them things. 
big old river here in a minute. Pretty. A beautiful day, it's at 43 Fahrenheit, whatever that is. Cool. Not in the truck though. Toast. Oh, it turns out my facts about uh, the outlaw were totally wrong. He was, he died in 1980-something, did um, Jesse, uh, whatever his face was. So, the Stephanie fact, she first sussed it out. It was re-photographed by somebody in 1965. So, obviously, they found the photograph and redid it. Look at them mountains. Am I the luckiest trucker ever? Let's go find me some mountains. I found some. There you go. Look at them. They are some else those. As long as the snow stays up there, I'm quite happy with that. Picture postcard snow, that's what we want. We don't want that dirty shit down here. Well, I've got a free run now. Uh, you know, there's more to, it's like when I get home on a weekend. Oh, no, not just during the weekend, during the week or something like that. Uh, I'll. Get, I get up earlier than everybody else because I'm old and uh, get up and start and get messed about on the internet and looking. The first thing I look at is the first day I'm home the next day I, because I'll be, I'm will be i planning already then that I'll be moving out on before everybody gets up. I like to get all my chores and shit sorted out. So, uh, there's a, you know, <clears throat> it's not like just driving up and down England or somewhere like that where it's pretty easy. Driving coast to coast and uh, long distances across you know, different terrains and things like that is a lot to look into. And uh, I'll be looking straight away at the weather, long distance weather. You can predict uh, a storm coming in for about a week before usually and they're pretty good about it. But uh, frost, and sh sheer frost and temperatures dropping rapidly and things like that are a bit different. They can, they can change a little bit. But uh, a big snowstorm, you can see that. So I'm looking straight away to see if so say I, when I get home, I normally say to um, um, Anchor Trucking, which is now not my boss, uh, I'll say to Case Dispatch, I'll say uh, I'll be ready in three days to move out. So I'll get home and say Saturday, I'm ready Tuesday, Friday, ready Monday, something like that, you know what I mean? And so on. If it's a long one, if it's just been a week, I'll just stay home for two days, whatever, you know what I mean? If it's bad, things different. <coughs> you can't. You know, you, can, you, can, you can't afford to stay home too long. You've got to keep the, the wheels moving, kind of thing. That's part of the parcel of the job. So with that said, you get uh, into a routine of looking at the weather. And if I see that there's going to be a big storm of a snock on me, I'll cut it short and I'll say to him, get me out Monday rather than Tuesday or something like that. Because I don't want to be slinging chains or messing about getting stuck and losing too much time and things like that. Then you're chasing all the way. So you've really got to watch that. I'll leave it an extra day or something like that. You've really got to watch the weather. As it happens at the moment, <coughs> <coughs> geez, if I don't die before I come back off this trip, um, I'll, uh, I've got a free pass all the way, uh, basically down here and back again of a price mountain, snock only, there's no snow due for another week or so. So happy days, sunshine all the way. Check this in Albuquerque. Look at this, kind of bloody freezing. I mean, card works here, so I'm quite happy. Four dollars sixty-five. Well, it's four dollars sixty-six, just about. It's a win-win, definitely. So I've managed to get all the way down here on less than five dollars a gallon. Not all five dollars. Yeah, five dollars a gallon. Uh, where, where I filled up coming out of Washington, out of uh, Oregon, less than five dollars. The Pacific Pride, less than five dollars here. So round trip. Under five dollars. If I can keep it round there, the five dollars twenty and stuff like that, we are laughing. I don't care if it's a shit all. That's nice. Um, I don't care at that price. You know what I mean? They can do what they like if they can't get the staff to clean the bins and shit like that. Here I am, just before Alba Quirky. Um, feeling up. Yes. Happy, happy with that. Definitely. That means we're going to make more money. More money means happy Vern. Morning in New Mexico. Woohoo! Look at that. Got a. Uh, Drop down to uh, something ridiculous like minus eight, I think, again last night. So uh, it's to be expected this time of year. Let's put some acid lights on because we're a bit steady out of there. <coughs> Just warn everybody, look, steady away truck. 
Yeah, we're just uh, we're just going up the road to the Loves here. It's uh, only 50 miles up the road. Hey, you look, you look a bit close. Me. This is uh, I-40 into State 40. It got a bit moist last night. Temperature dropped, and it, well, there's a lot of dew in the air. Uh, and like I said, the temperature was down at minus eight. Um, and it was, um, it was, it was getting, it was freezing up. There's a lot of uh, moisture on the road and stuff like that. And I-40 is a bit of a treacherous road. It really is. It's a bit of a training ground for students and stuff like that coming from um, going towards LA. So here we are. I. Uh, Video went off a bit sharpish last night. I parked up because of uh, it was getting a bit slippy out there on the I-40. Like I explained, it's, uh, it's, it's it's basically a lot of like a practice ground. Is the Interstate 40 runs from Chicago across to LA. There's a lot of transit and traffic through there. A lot of traffic, rather a lot of goods and stuff come through. Uh, and uh, once it gets a bit moist and dead. And, Temperatures start dropping, it gets a bit slippy out there, and people don't slow down, they just don't slow down. I didn't need to be out there, I had plenty of time, so I just thought, Zod that, I had packing, I had playing on this. Uh, we'll just pack up, so as you do, and then set off a little bit latish this morning. And uh, here we are now, just, just, this is just coming into, uh, into Texas, out of New Mexico. used to be a barber's last time I came through. That was that weird barber's that he, it was a little shed and he told me I had to book online to make an appointment. I'm like, it's like a one man band shed. I'm like, what? Okay. This is, um, are you, this isn't, uh, so I dropped down. <laughs> Let's try that one again. I dropped down from um, Santa Rosa and came uh, further uh, sort of southeast to come into Texas that way because I'm going underneath Dallas. So it's rather than going, you can go straight across to Dallas and Fort, uh, Fort Worth and come down that way, but nope. Look at the price here, still 519 for diesel in Texas. It's ridiculous. That's an interesting position you're in to turn left. Star locker, star driver. There's a reason why you're driving that. Cool beans, mister. And there's the state line over this year. Railway line. <laughs> yeah, so, drop down this way. The traffic isn't so much coming this way. I've just been to the loves back there. I'm uh, straight in for a shower. Making the most of my uh, last free shower month. Because I haven't fueled up on uh, in, uh, loves at all this month so there'll be no free showers anymore at the loves but really it is by the by you know if i can save myself uh 150 uh plus uh more on a foot on a fill up you know what i mean um a 15 dollar shower ain't gonna break the bank is it and plus you can claim all that back against your taxes anyway it's 100 right off you know it's it's by the by so your $15 free shower isn't that free anymore, is it? You know what I mean? When you're, uh, when you're paying an extra $150 a fuel to fill up. Plus, it was what, 60 cents? Uh, I've got it 60 cents. <coughs> 40, 40, 50, 60, yeah, 60 cents nearly. Cheaper, a gallon. All that's up, doesn't it? Petrol's still cheap, look at that, 3.19. It's 5.19, I saw it in Washington State. I just don't know what is going on. He's very lively. So I'm no, no real rush, I've been just poddling along at uh, 60, 65. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed with the fuel actually. I thought it'd be up a bit higher than what it is. It was reading when I stopped. <coughs> um, I think it's uh, 7.76 or something like that. And I've only been taking it steady. I haven't been going over 70 mile an hour. I've been keeping it around the 70 mile an hour, 65, 70 mile an hour back all the way. So hopefully with this bit, last bit of flat run all the way across here, I was hoping to get it up to eight actually. If I can get it to eight, I'll be, I'll be happy. Here we are, Texas. Uh, 
Like I mentioned, I can run my agricultural tomorrow. So I won't do all my miles today. I'll get within 150 miles and then run it tomorrow. It gives me something to do rather than sat about. Rather than rushing straight across there tonight, getting over there at six o'clock or something, seven o'clock, what's the point? And then sitting all day. I may as well just take my time and then I'm saving on not bothering getting a hotel and sitting about, you know what I mean? Easy job. We'll be there at Dawn's Bits on um, on Monday morning. Well, here we are, Saturday night, quarter past, uh, quarter past seven in Texas, and I've uh, basically fucked up. Um, I usually like to go out on a Saturday night, especially in Texas, barbecue. Good God, you know, the, the, the place for the barbecue and stuff like that, past the load of them. I got chatting with my mate Paul from Canada on the phone, uh, whizzed by loads of them. I thought I'll get stopped, I can stop soon because I'm, uh, I'm 150 mile away from a delivery. Don't deliver till Monday, it's Saturday. Uh, I can run tomorrow in on agricultural, so you know, I can get stopped. But past all these barbecue places, got chatting on the phone like old washerwoman. And uh, before you know it, I'm in the goddamn middle of nowhere. And uh, there's nowhere around here at all. Nowhere. And I've just been looking for... I'm just on a bit of waste ground with Matthew there with his dumb straight through pipes. Bum, 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 in a way. The temperature is, but seriously, the temperature's 39. It's not, it feels warmer than that out there. And he's sat there with that engine running. What a, but hey ho. It's his diesel in it. If he wants to waste that diesel, that's entirely up to him. Um, so I've just Googled restaurants and shit like that. Everywhere's shutting at nine o'clock and stuff. And there's no, none really that close. So. I may as well just stay on this uh, bit of place ground for my Saturday night. So it'll be Steph's cooking, but never mind, in a film night. Um, we've got a big old light, so that's nice. At least we're lit up a bit. So what didn't really work to plan, did it? But hey ho, shit happens. Hopefully we'll get packed up. Uh, well, might change tomorrow. I'll put me night off uh, for, for another night. So telly night it is. Morning all. Lazy Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock. Uh, I've been up for a bit, but I didn't get up too early. Got up about 8 o'clock or something like that. Nice lying. Because uh, I'm only 150, 155 miles away from where I'm going. I'm running agricultural, so I ain't bothered. Um, you know what I mean? I can get there and just chill out. Still in the same place in the uh, nice little spot, in it? So we're just been cleaning up and sorting some things out. Got the uh, little update, what's going on. Uh, got the amplifier fitted. Well, uh, I don't like this wire. This wire needs to be, I need to get home and be able to drill into there to get through to there, uh, to hide all the wires. I hate wires hanging about, what is that? Um, really hate those. And also this needs cutting out. I need to cut this piece out here because uh, the amplifier is hiding behind there. To turn it on and off, I've got to pull the panel off. Uh, it won't draw too much power when it's not being used actually. So uh, I had to bother about leaving it on basically. So that's uh, tucked back into there. And we've got all that wired in, that's not right. But things dropping off all our, our place. There we go. Um, yeah, wait till uh, we're getting a report off anybody, see if nobody seems to be able to hear me yet. So I'm hoping it is actually working. It's receiving, brilliant, because I'm receiving from Pennsylvania and all over the place, which is uh, a fair way. But that's good due to skips and atmospherics and stuff like that. Um, let me show you a little bit what we've got going on here. This I was wrong, I've said that earlier about uh, it being going to be a cold cab and stuff like that. It definitely isn't. It was down at four degrees last night. I didn't even have the night heater on. I didn't have the bunk heater on. No word of a lie. This, I don't know, like I say, I don't know how Peter Bill have done it, but I do now. There's a little secret. I don't know why I didn't notice this before. So look what we've got going on under here. This is the heater for the back. And the door shuts. This is the heater for the back. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess under here. I haven't really sorted it out properly yet. Um, yeah, back heater, front heater, you have two separate ones, blows out or down there. And it also has these air ducts running across here. So you've got all these air ducts coming across, all the way across the back panel there as well. Yeah. Obviously makes the world of difference, doesn't it? Whereas the Freightliner didn't have that. So anything, if you had water or anything underneath your bunk, 
like my uh, shower thing I had that froze up and burst pipes and all sorts of shit because it was cold under that. I had noticed when I was lifting this up, I thought, well, there's no cold rush or anything like this, obviously. It's all the heating duct from the heater go up the back panel there, one on each side and one on each side of the top. So that whole back panel is kept nice, all the corners are kept nice and warm, all underneath and everything. Super toasty, really, really does make a hell of a difference as that. So I'm just gonna hope to have another coffee, I think, chill out a little bit, um, and then maybe go find me a restaurant or something, Sunday afternoon. That's what we're gonna do. So it is Monday, and we are here on the bay, actually, Drismal Temple. Uh, day in Texas. I looked out this morning, it reminded me of Germany. All wet and dreary, all back home in Yorkshire. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. We've had a good run down, I ain't had any rain or anything like that. It's been super cold and stuff. Um, don't expect at this, this delivery, I'm just gonna make a coffee, that you're gonna get in there and out there early or anything like that. I'm an hour behind my uh, delivery time. Not for my fault, I was here last night. They, uh, they didn't call me in until, uh, what, what is it now? It's just coming up to nine o'clock and they haven't started unloading me yet, but I've just got on the bay. So, it, you know, there's no point in getting all stressing and, and getting upset with yourself or anything like that. Be prepared, you are gonna probably wait four hours. If you're anything over four hours, then you can start crying and getting upset with them all, you know what I mean? But the majority of time, for produce, I'm just start the engine. Uh, it is, it is going to be four hours, and that's what it is. So it's time to get my paperwork out, do all my paperwork, do my mileage and stuff like that. Great thing about over here, it's not like in Europe or England, whereas you want to be an owner driver and oh my god, you've got to go through loopholes, you've got to do all this, all that, all the malarkey and other stuff. Don't forget, I'm running on Anchor's authority which I have no real intentions of getting my own authority because I like the way it runs like this. Yes, you do give them 10% for that privilege, but they do all my fuel taxes, they work all that. All I do is do my mileage. So give them a mileage, exactly the same. But it's the, it's the same paperwork and everything I fill out, exactly the same as, uh, as I did, you know, yeah, you can see that, as I did as a, as a company driver. So you just fill all that out, Put your mileage, which, which state you go through, which route you take, and things like that. The only difference is, uh, I keep my, I have to file all my receipts for like waste scales. The diesel, they'll give me the fuel receipts, they'll give me back afterwards. Uh, any other receipts and stuff like that. I've got to keep food, showers, uh, maintenance. Uh, bling bits on the truck obviously uh, we can claim back and stuff like that so as long as you keep hold of all your receipts and keep them in order and stuff like that it's not exactly rocket science it's not that stressful so like I say I'm uh, I, I've no intentions of searching for my own loads and shit like that and stuff you know people say oh get your own look 10% is a big lump you know if you're doing 22,000 a month or something like that 22 to 25,000 uh, you know you are lo losing a bit the trailer bit is as well, because they take 10% for the trailer, for the use of their trailer. Uh, unlimited mileage on that, but 10% of the load. So, you know, that's 20, that, that is quite a lump. When you work it out and stuff like that. So I need to talk to John about leasing, leasing a trailer off him. I know they'll let me lease a trailer. Uh, see if that'll, that'll probably save me, uh, I, I don't know how much he wants for a lease, maybe 500 bucks a month or something like that. And so we'll, we'll, uh, well, that's something I need to talk about, obviously, in the future. We're just going to let it roll for a bit now and see where we are with it. With doing these Texas, uh, the, the, they pay okay. You know, uh, I, it works out for me to 220 a mile, 210 a mile or something like that after the anchor take their bit. So, you know, I'm pretty happy. It's not big mileage. Only doing two in a month like I have done this month is, uh, is down... I'm not earning super amount of money or anything like that, but I'm earning more than being a company driver. I need, you need to be doing three really, it's only 9,000 miles uh, for doing two, it's only like um, 5,000 mile round trip, if that. So you, you want to be doing three in a month really, uh, 
or, or, or two one month three the next and then you, you're earning a good good wage and stuff like that and peace of mind because you're gonna get have, have the extras tucked by and stuff like that so that's where we're up to at the moment I am still extremely nervous until I see everything uh, coming in and stuff like that you know what I mean all the uh, the checks and the balance and everything weighing itself out in the bank and stuff like that um, it's obviously nervous I've, I've calculated this for years for two years plus uh, and stuff but it's still at the back of your mind think, God is it gonna work is it gonna work and another loads of pressure on as well with you guys watching and stuff like that uh, it's not as though now because I've done the YouTube it's not as not as though I can just uh, hide back and slide away is it and go back to a comfy drive with my head held low but if it if it doesn't work we can always do that can't we I'm just coming out of Davy Crockett Turn National Forest. West Texas 7. Oh, right. Uh, straight on is Louisiana, Louisiana, if I keep going around. I'm basically in the uh, mid-east of Texas. Dallas is up that way. No, I'm going east. East. Well, northeast. So, uh, yeah, to that uh, a town that I can't even pronounce, I'm not even going to try. It's worse than Stock oh, 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 me. So, we'll just go with it. That's it. Nakogodon Dutchies. Nakogod Dutch. Nakogod. Nakogod Dutchies. Nakogodon. There, you look it up. Yeah, so. It was it was uh, 180 miles from where I unloaded to where I'm going to pick up. I don't pick up until Turn noon back. tomorrow. West Texas so I'm in no rush. I've just boodled along here. 75 mile an hour speed limit, 70, 75. I've just been coming along at 70 mile an hour. I've got the, uh, it's been averaging about uh, nine and a half, ten to the gallon. You know, there's no point at all in rushing when you've got all day to get across there and all morning to get to where I'm loading and then it doesn't unload anyway until Sunday back home so and the first the first is this right that looks weird this junction it's going down the wrong way down a one way um, yeah it's got a sa south Seattle and then uh, not far from home uh, at Everett which is um, what, 40 mile from home or something like that on Sunday. If it had just been the Everett, I'd have uh, gone like hell and try and got home for probably Friday night or something like that. But it's it's going to cost too much to run all the way down and back down from home down to uh, uh, south of Seattle and then come back up again on Sunday. It's not not going to be worth it for a day. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll just go with it. I'll be on for. Sunday lunchtime. I'm going to call them anyway tomorrow. See what time I get loaded first, and then give the people a call in five. If they're working Sunday, they might work Saturday. I'll have a, we'll have a little Google and uh, have a look what the crack is, and go from there. If they do, it'd be a bonus. It definitely would, you know, extra day at home kind of thing. And then uh, I think I'll get it booked in for for service and stop due for service, and get rid of some of the beep beep silly noises that go on every time I press the brake. Yeah, this is really pretty over here. The, Texas is huge, 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 huge. It's the biggest state. I think it's the biggest state. Or is Alaska? The, no, Alaska might well be the biggest state. Anyway, the uh, motto is, the saying is, it takes forever to get to Texas and forever to get out of Texas. It does, it's right. Because it's right back there, uh, down at the bottom in the middle. And it's... Uh, dog having a munch on uh, and a deer there. I saw a big, um, you've got all sorts of animals here. You've got deer, elk, you've got everything going on here. Yeah, I even saw a big um, wild boar earlier. And those things are huge. I didn't realize it was, they were that big. It was massive. It was like the size of a, of a large sheep. And they're grumpy bastards. They are not happy things. Well, you don't have to look at the face, don't you? Imagine looking like that all your life. Ugly bastards. Yeah, so you don't want to get cornered with one of them or anything. Now, plenty of hunting to be done around here. I'd like to try a bit of wild boar. We can get somewhere, some barbecue wild boar tonight. Maybe that'll be nice. So yeah, I've just pulled along 60 mile an hour all the way across and uh, saved the fuel. Hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm aiming to try and get it up to eight to the gallon by the time I get home. It was down at 7.7, .7, I think it was, when I unloaded. 
so by the time I get loaded I don't know what the weight is yet and uh, get building back again I've got quite a long way of flat ground to build uh, before I start hitting the mountains again so that should give me some of my uh, miles back give me a better miles to gallon kind of thing if you know what I mean because it'll be over a 5,000 mile uh, trek in all by the time I get home what's going on here Cedric chain issues it's been a bit wet and dry, but the temperature's good, traffic's light. All single track road all the way across. All been like this all the way, basically. It's nice. No hold ups going through a few little villages. Lovely. Where else would you rather be? It's cool. Nice little up and down undulating hills. Big word, isn't it? You got them horrible turkey vultures as well here. Horrible scabby things. So if we don't find anywhere, there's a truck stop not far away from where I'm on, uh, picking up actually. I tried to call the people to see if they've got overnight parking but nobody's answering the phone there. Uh, yeah, the truck stop not far away so I'm going to fire it in there. Talk to them people because there's uh, weight limits all over the place. Uh, Garmin's coming up with weight limits all the way into the place but that does the stupid things now anyway. It tells me there's weight limits on the on interstates, so interstate 5 and uh, should, around uh, Chattanooga and places like that. Bulls. So these nice people, I've just uh, come up, might, let, let me check in, it's quarter past, uh, 20 past five here in Texas and my load isn't ready till lunchtime tomorrow. 12 o'clock uh, and I thought I'll just chance it and see what the crack is and I said uh, any chance I really want to go out tonight I want to go for a steak tonight I haven't been out in in over a week or so and I've been sat in this cab all the time yesterday and today what did you say keep going down here this looks a bit similar doesn't it um, and uh, I said I just wanted to find somewhere I can drop the trailer so I thought I'll bring it all the way in and she said, yeah, I can book you in now, no problem. Um, I said, is there anywhere I can drop my trailer? So she rang somebody up, yeah, take it onto the dirt lock, lot at the back. So that sounds ominous, but hey, if I can drop my trailer and I can go off and then come back tomorrow, happy bloody days, I say. This is, ch ooh, look at all the waffle, waffle or waffle or whatever you call it. It's all chicken bits. That'll be in your Kentucky Fried Chicken right there. 100% chicken. Oh, a shite and poop. Now that's what we're loading chickens. Chickens! Oh, well, it doesn't look too bad actually. That'll be the uh, bastard guard on. Says, uh, this is a busy going on, isn't it? Oh, we're back out again. We'll come in to get out again. There you go, matey. Hey there. Hello. Oops. find somewhere out of uh, mr. shunter's way um so eventually eventually I get my trailer back so I came and checked in over 24 hours ago day before yes no long 40, 40 or 8 hours ago um but in a bit of a Upbeat, I get uh, $30 an hour for um, $30 an hour after the first three hours of waiting. My pickup was at 12 o'clock yesterday, it's now 6 30 in the morning, 12 o'clock midday. So, uh, but that caps out at 200. And, where are you going, buddy? I can see that caps out at $250. So, that's uh. It's better than nothing, I suppose. You know, I haven't been anywhere. It's covered expenses and stuff like that. Uh, it would have been nicer, but I, I aren't going to get... The only difference is I'm going to have to rush a little bit where I could have taken it really steady. But, oh, my God, this looks like a shit show, doesn't it? 
Oh, no, I don't want to be. I want to, thought I wanted to be over there. I don't know why. Uh, no, we'll go this way. That would have been interesting. Your speed is six miles an hour. There you go. Yeah, so at least we get a little bit out of the job. Got to clean the mirrors. Uh, yeah, it's unaccompanied. They uh, they load the trailer for you and put it back in the parking lot. Obviously, it wasn't in the uh, place it was meant to be. It wasn't in the uh, bit, so I had to go and search for it. <laughs> Which, you know, I, at first I was a little surprised it wasn't where they said it'd be. But should I be surprised with this company? Not really. So, anyway, we found it in the end. Make sure you do all your checks when you pick a trailer up. Yard shunters are usually regular guys who don't change and stuff like that. So, they're, you know, they're pretty good. They know the place. But just check it all over before you pull it out or anything like that. Because if there's any damage afterwards, you've got not a leg to stand or anything like that. I've got a bonus as well. I've got the yard shunter to uh, the fill the reefer up as well. So I've got half a tank of fuel for nothing. So there's a bonus as well. Because I was worried about it being here for all that time. Stress my concern. Anyway, I've just got to... Go check out here. That was my accommodation over there for the last day and a half. 